Moses Waldus here for our first look at sports. And of course, Lady Mints are bandits maybe packing the brooms with them with their trip out to Vermilion. You don't really get ahead of yourselves, but no. can't help but think, sweet. No, well, you know what? After the first three games, I believe it was this series, they destroyed them. I think it was like 21 to 4 was uh, the score in terms of the, at least outscoring the Vermilion Tigers. The Bandits uh, looked well on their way for the sweep. And they got the spark, or the party started just two and a half minutes in. Of course, uh, Koli Baba, that's Brant Koli Baba, uh, he was solid again, of course, uh, getting this one started with the goal. I could talk about it, but I'd rather show you. There you go, five hole, partial breakaway, one nothing. Now, the Tigers would get the equalizer. Craig Wilkinson with a nice move, great chance here by Eastern Oborowski, yeah, scoops that one up. Uh, he doesn't look so great here, though. Vermillion will dump it in. Oborowski uh, tries to go up the middle. Instead, he coughs it up by putting it off Randy Simmons and into his own net. It's 1-1 with under six to play in the opening frame. Now the Bandits will get that back a buck 35 later. Jared Wayhill starts a beautiful passing play to Hunter Maidenick, and he finishes it off. It's 2-1 Lloyd after 20. Then move on early second. More from Lloyd Minster. Brody Pollard grabs the puck in the slot and Gets the backhand to go. 3-1 at that point. The Bandits would take this one by a score of 5-2, completing the four-game sweep. Now from one type of sweep to another, the Lakeland Rustlers curling teams play host to the ACAC Championships in Vermilion. The ladies will play against four other teams, making it a five-team tournament. Now the reason for this, Grand Prairie, had to forfeit due to a player not meeting the academic requirements, putting Augustana and Red Deer College with identical records. Normally in this instance, the two teams would play a tiebreaker for the fourth and final spot, but the ACAC decided to add a team. Rustler's head coach Chris McQuid says it might be a pain, but the ladies will adjust thrown in there and uh, there's also the possibility of tiebreakers which uh, aren't going to be played by games but by draw to the button which is uh, definitely changes up your strategy so uh, it, it makes things interesting and uh, it uh, at the end of the day we just have to go out and play our game and uh, it's gonna be one extra game but we're gonna have to go out and win. The mixed team is also in the running for a medal and home ice will definitely be an advantage. Actually, a lot of the players have told me they feel a lot more confident playing at home and uh, they know the ice and uh, Nick Wolf from Vermilion there has done a great job with the ice this year and get a chance to check out the ice. It should be the closest to what it will be for Provincials tomorrow. So uh, I think that's a huge advantage and uh, hopefully that gives us that little extra edge, uh, not having to uh, take time reading the ice and uh, get a jump on the competition. The tournament will start at noon tomorrow. Now moving on to Bantam AAA tonight, the Lloydminster Universal Heat will look to sweep their best of three series with the PAC Saints in Spruce Grove. It was all heat in game one as they hammered the Saints 9-1, to one. but head coach Travis Clayton expects a chippier game two. That's your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau has your weather forecast coming up. All right, back home, the hockey talent pool in the border city has grown substantially over the years and on Wednesday it was proven once again as Baker Hughes Bobcats forward Chasten Braid signed a WHL contract with the Saskatoon Blades. Matt Schumann has more on the local product in this week's Superstar Next Door. Having a great campaign putting up 15 goals to go along with 32 points, Chasten Braid was rewarded as he signed a WHL contract with the Saskatoon Blades on Wednesday. Yeah, it's real great. Uh, I've always wanted to get my next step for the level and Finally got the chance. The team, it's just uh, been another great getting me to the next level. Coach has been really well. And the signing comes as no surprise for head coach Cole Fisher, who says he has seen huge strides taken by his young forward. He's one of those guys that I think is perfect for that league. He plays up and down the wall. He can shoot a puck. He skates well. So, you know, when you put those things together and when he's on and, and hungry, he, he, he's a real dynamic forward. He, he's probably a little more skilled than his older brother that plays in PA, but I think he's going to fill out and be kind of tough like his older brother as well. So, The Blades are currently in a rebuilding stage and are adding a lot of young talent. With that being said, Braid says he can see himself wearing the double blue next season. Yeah, definitely they're going to be a young team and hopefully I can be a piece of that puzzle there. Once you get uh, past that 17 year, year old age, it's tough to play and, and you know, start playing in that league when you're an 18 year old. So I think next year is his, his chance and hopefully he does well and, and, and sticks there. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports.